that's Matt. And this is not his voice. It's hers. Wait, no, not her. There you go. That's Holly Plus. It's a voice model AI that's trained on Holly's voice and is an experiment on consent in AI. What does it mean to be an artist when anybody can create as you? Do you say, nobody should be able to create as me and I'm gonna shut this down? Or do you lean into it and say, let's acknowledge that this is now a thing and see how far we can take it? <laughs> I never really saw myself as a kind of true vocalist. Let's give it a little shimmer. Ooh. So when I learned of machine learning and the ability to train on my own voice, that's when I could really create a kind of digital version of my voice that could kind of do all of the vocal gymnastics that my physical voice and my own training can't do. She is a kind of digital version of myself. Holly Plus is dreamed up in the latent space of machine learning algorithms and is a collective hallucination of who I am through the filter of the internet. For now, the Holly Plus site allows anyone to upload sounds and hear them sung back in Holly's voice. But the publicly available version doesn't allow Holly Plus to sing actual words. We weren't quite ready to unleash the fully language capable version without figuring out what kind of guardrails we want to put up around that. What kind of words do I not want people to sing through my natural singing voice? Do I want to make everything available? It feels like we're on the cusp of something big, like really big. I think it's fair to say we are going through a bit of a renaissance in, in machine learning, and it doesn't show any signs of slowing down. Now, more people than ever are equipped with tools to remix the world in almost any way they can imagine. Even if that means making Drake rap about beans. Stick to my guns and say no to the beans. I don't like them in my chile. It's just how it's gonna be. Or rap another artist's song. Or have Eminem profess his love for cats. Eminem loves cats. Can't you tell from this first? Using AI to mimic an artist's voice has led to massive controversy with questions around artists' rights and compensation. But if we go back to the early days of sampling, we just might find some answers. We all love the rich sampled music history that we can all enjoy, but there were also a lot of people who were treated really unfairly at that time. We have the Amen break with Gregory Coleman, who was never remunerated for that drum sample, which was the most sampled sound in music history. The lack of a licensing structure led to a bunch of lawsuits, like when Vanilla Ice sampled the bass line from Under Pressure. While sampling created new forms of music, All right, stop. licensing helped strike a balance between protecting artists and encouraging creativity. In actuality, sampling was a net good for the world. It produced interesting new art forms. You could likely say the same with machine learning technologies. There will be new kinds of artistry that we haven't necessarily seen before, and that's delicious. For this one, I think we can just play out the, Mac, uh, the MacBook. So then all we have to do is this. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Oops. Oh, I didn't like that. <laughs> so we've trained several algorithms now. There's Spawn, was trained on our ensemble. <laughs> There's also Holly Plus that was trained exclusively on my voice. And then for Proto, the album that we made dealing with largely co-created models, we worked with people who knew what was gonna happen with the data. Sing with me louder now. Knew that they were training an AI and were really excited about the prospect. It's kind of like farm to table <laughs> data or something. We were quite explicit and 
probably, I think, the first to really acknowledge that consent regarding training data of these networks was going to be a major issue, as has been proven. Remember this? Well, it's already been taken down. And Drake? He's had enough of these AI renditions, which has led the Universal Music Group to ask streaming services like Spotify to restrict AI companies from accessing copyrighted music. There has been a kind of culture war emerge that I would argue presents a kind of false dilemma between pro-AI people or artists and anti-AI artists. Holly and I ignore that premise. We don't see any conflict between being very, very excited about developments in machine learning and also being very concerned about artist welfare. So we thought, oh, okay, it would actually be quite constructive and useful to provide people with a tool to understand how these systems work and get a more intimate, personal understanding of how they feel about it. If you're in there, do you want to be in there? So Matt and Holly created a website called Have I Been Trained, which lets artists search for their work in major AI art systems like Stable Diffusion and Imogen. Hey. To see how it works, we had Matt walk us through it. If you just right click on any one of those images, you can add that image to your opt out. You've now registered that to opt out of AI training and we can deliver that request to organizations. This is kind of like the first step in beginning consenting relationships with AI models and AI training practices. We both believe that consent is the way forward for this stuff and it just so happens that we actually consent. I think we'll look back on today and realize that we're really at a kind of crossroads at this moment. How will we deal with consent? Will this end up in walled gardens and silos? Or will this be something that anyone can use? Now is the time to get excited about it and start having some big ideas because I think that over time, consenting data will actually be better for artists and individuals and be better for AI. And everyone will want to opt in but on their own terms.